the transfusion and anemia expertise initiative for the control and avoidance of bleeding popularly called as taxi cap has given certain recommendations for plasma and platelet transfusions please make a note that all these recommendations are applicable to critically ill pediatric patients i have mentioned the recommendations along with summarizing the same as we move on so for all they have given a bleeding assessment scale for quantifying the bleeding severe bleeding is any of the following attributable to bleeding per se either bleeding which leads to one organ dysfunction within 24 hours of the previous assessment or baseline using pilot 2 score criteria of organ dysfunction leads to hemodynamic instability defined as increase in heart rate more than 20% from baseline or decrease in blood pressure by more than 20% or leads to a drop in hemoglobin more than 20% within 24 hours or quantifiable bleeding more than 5 ml per kg per hour for 1 hour intraspinal bleeding intraarticular bleeding or intraocular bleeding leading to impaired vision moderate bleeding will be defined by all of the following more than minimal but without meeting the criteria for severe bleeding not leading to organ dysfunction not leading to hemodynamic instability leading to a drop in hemoglobin but less than 20% less than equal to 20% and quantifiable bleeding more than equal to 1 ml per kg per hour but less than 5 ml per kg per hour as was for severe bleeding minimal bleeding was again any of the following that is streaks of blood in endotracheal tube or during suctioning streaks of blood in nasogastric tube macroscopic hematuria less than equal to 1 plus on urine dipstick quantifiable bleeding even less than that for moderate bleeding that is less than 1 ml per kg per hour and bloody dressings which are to be changed not less than each 6 hour or weighing more, no more than 1 ml per kg per hour if weight due to their soakage. So, guidelines for all critically ill children for plasma and platelet transfusions include whenever you are deciding to monitor, whenever you are deciding to transfuse, you must monitor not only hemostasis but the overall clinical context of the patient like symptoms, signs of bleeding, physiological markers, etc and must also weigh the risk, benefits and alternatives to plasma and platelet transfusion before deciding on as to transfusing platelets or plasma. The next thing is that plasma as a volume expander may not be beneficial and should avoid the use of the same. And the important thing is that one must try to minimize the number of donor exposures because this will lead to alloimmunity. Then as regards lab assays to prescribe plasma and platelet transfusions, there is insufficient evidence to recommend a specific test per se or a threshold or as a target for platelet transfusions for prophylactic or therapeutic indications in general. But in critically ill children with severe trauma or intracranial hemorrhage or traumatic brain injury, a close monitoring of bleeding is required. In hemorrhagic shock following trauma, a resuscitation strategy of RBCs, plasma and platelets can be done in the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 1 is to 1. In these patients, viscoelastic testing, for example, thromboelastography may be considered as an adjunct to standard laboratory hemostatic testing to consider decision on transfusion. Now, what is viscoelastic testing? Viscoelastic testing is basically a graphical representation of each step of the clotting pathway for more details you can see on the internet but this is what it exactly means and thromboelastography is a kind of viscoelastic testing so besides the routine tests like PTA, PTT, INR you can also consider getting the tests for of thromboelastography done to see whether it is actually coagulation defect or the patient is bleeding because of severe trauma or some other reason in neurologically stable patients with any condition of the above, platelet transfusions are to be done. Platelet transfusions if the platelet count more than 1 lakh per millimeter cube may not be beneficial. If an ICP monitoring device must be inserted in a neurologically deteriorating patient, then platelet transfusions may be considered if the platelet count is less than 1 lakh. And if the device is to be inserted in a neurologically deteriorating patient, then plasma transfusion may not be beneficial if the INR is less than or equal to 1.5. So to summarize, 
RBCs, plasma and platelets are preferably to be transfused in ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 1 is to 1 in critically ill children with severe trauma, intracranial hemorrhage or traumatic brain injury. In neurologically stable children, we don't need to transfuse if the platelets are less than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter. And in neurologically deteriorating patients, platelets need to be transfused if intracranial pressure monitoring device is, to, is being uh, applied. If the platelets are less than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter, but not if INR is less than or equal to 1.5, then we might not consider transfusing prophylactic plasma per se. Now, following cardiopulmonary bypass surgery, viscoelastic testing may be considered as an adjunct to standard hemostatic testing as we saw in the previous scene. In development of institution specific transfusion algorithms is important for these patients. For patients on extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, that is ECMO, we, the recommendations suggest measuring platelet counts and coagulation system dysfunction before all plasma and platelet transfusions unless the patient is experiencing life-threatening bleeding because you have to be very cautious. A lot of blood is required in these patients. Prophylactic platelet transfusion in the absence of clinically significant bleeding is unlikely to benefit if the platelet count is greater than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter, so you don't need to give prophylactic platelets in them. Now, for patients who have an underlying oncological diagnosis or following a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, prophylactic platelet transfusions may be considered for a platelet count less than 10,000. Therapeutic platelet transfusions might be considered for moderate or severe bleeding and prophylactic plasma transfusions for minor coagulopathy that is INR less than or equal to 1.5 or APTT less than or equal to 1.5 might not be considered, might, may not be beneficial unless performing surgery at a critical site for example orbit, brain, facial nerve, spinal column etc. So to summarize, prophylactic platelet counts are to be given if the platelet count is less than 10,000, therapeutic platelets for moderate to severe bleeding and prophylactic plasma per se is not required if INR is less than or equal to 1.5 unless you are performing surgery of a critical site. Then in patients having acute liver failure or following liver transplantation, prophylactic plasma and platelet transfusions may not be beneficial in absence of moderate or severe bleeding. Rather, restrictive plasma and platelet transfusion strategies need to be adopted in these patients. Following non-cardiac surgery, Routine coagulation testing may not be beneficial. If any coagulation testing, however, is done and an abnormality is noted, prophylactic plasma transfusion based solely on abnormal PTINR or APTT values may not be beneficial. And therefore, a formal hematology or transfusion medicine consultation has been recommended by these guidelines. In case the patient is having no active or is having only minimal bleeding, then platelet transfusions may be considered if the platelet count is less than or equal to 20,000 per cubic millimeter. So to summarize, prophylactic platelets need to be given if they are less than 20,000 per cubic millimeter, even if the patient has no active or is having only minimal bleeding in critically ill patients following non-cardiac surgery. So, if the, these patients, critically ill patients having non-cardiac surgery, in the general surgery we mean to say, they have moderate bleeding, coagulation testing might be considered to ascertain the likely etiology of bleeding and to permit appropriately targeted intervention. Plasma transfusion might be considered to correct abnormal PTINR or APTT values which are greater than two times the reference value. And platelet transfusions might be considered when the platelet count is less than or equal to even 50,000, not the cutoff is not even 20,000, it is 50,000 for moderate bleeding for patients who are having non-cardiac surgery. So to summarize, if there is moderate bleeding, prophylactic platelets are to be given if the value is less than 50,000 per cubic millimeter and plasma if the reference, if the values are more than equal to two times the reference value. Now for patients undergoing invasive procedures outside the operating room, which includes central line insertion and liver biopsy, plasma transfusion may not be beneficial if INR is less than or equal to 1.5 and is of uncertain benefit if the INR is between 1.6 and 2.4, so the risks of transfusion must be balanced. But in patients in whom INR is greater than 2.5, plasma transfusion should definitely be considered 
but balanced against the risks and the clinical context. So to summarize, prophylactic plasma is not to be given if INR is less than or equal to 1.5 in patients who are undergoing invasive procedures outside the operating room. It is of uncertain benefit if INR is between 1.6 to 2.4 and they sh it should definitely be considered if INR is more than 2.5. Now, prophylactic platelet transfusions may not be beneficial when the platelet count is greater than 50,000, is of uncertain benefit when it is between 20 to 50,000 and should be considered when it is less than or equal to 20,000. And you must also remember that prophylactic platelet transfusions is not beneficial prior to minor procedures such as peripheral IV cannula insertion, central line catheter removal, bone marrow aspirate and bone marrow biopsy. I want everyone to make a note of the same. Sometimes the residents are confused, ma'am, how to perform bone marrow in this patient. The platelet counts are only 10,000, 12,000 or 9,000, 8,000, whatever. But I want to clarify over here that bone marrow aspirate and biopsy can be performed irrespective of the low platelet count because it is not a major invasive procedure, first thing. And the second thing is that if the patient is having underlying blood dyscrasia or leukemia, then it is quintessential to make a rapid diagnosis as early as possible because the cancer cells are multiplying exponentially. So to summarize, prophylactic platelets are not to be given if bit more than 50,000 per cubic millimeter. They are of uncertain benefit of between 20,000 to 50,000 and they are to be given if it, they are in patients having platelet counts less than 20,000 per cubic millimeter. But these are for invasive procedures outside the OR. Now for patients undergoing elective lumbar puncture. It is uncertain whether there is any benefit of prophylactic platelet transfusions between 20 to 50,000 platelet count, but prophylactic platelets can be considered if the platelet count is less than 20,000. So, the same has been summarized over here. And in patients having sepsis and or disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, in the absence of moderate or severe bleeding, prophylactic plasma may not be beneficial. With moderate bleeding, plasma transfusion may not be beneficial if the INR is less than or equal to 1.5. In the absence of moderate or severe bleeding, platelet transfusions might be considered when the platelet count is less than 10,000. Note there is a difference. In all the previous scenes, most of the previous scenes we saw, it is less than 20,000, but in sepsis and ODIC, platelet transfusions may be considered when the platelet count is less than or equal to 10,000. And if Present platelet transfusions might be considered when the platelet count is less than 50,000. That is, if moderate to severe bleeding is present, then you might need to transfuse platelets even if it is less than 50,000, depending on the clinical context. So, all you have to make note of is that you don't have to go by the number itself, the value of the platelet count or the INR, APT, TPT. You have to see the clinical context also. So, if there is no moderate to severe bleeding, prophylactic platelets, if less than 10,000 and prophylactic plasma is not beneficial. If however moderate bleeding is present, prophylactic platelets can be given even if platelet count is less than 50,000 <clears throat> and prophylactic plasma is not to be given if INR is less than or equal to 1.5. As regards selection and processing of plasma and platelet components, the use of leukocyte reduced or leukodepleted cellular blood components is recommended as always. In RH negative child, in need of platelet transfusion. RH positive platelets can also be transfused if RH negative component is not available. I again want the residents to make a note of this because they are often confused with the same. Products may be selected that balance risk of transfusion transmitted infections, hemostatic effects and clinical outcomes and whenever a critically ill pediatric patient has persistently poor platelet count increments following platelet transfusions, you must do a clinical and lab assessment for platelet refractiveness because there is a high possibility he might have developed platelet alloantibodies. Guess I've been able to simplify the recommendations. Thank you for watching and please do share the knowledge. Thank you.